In this section, we're going to be looking at different activating and deactivating groups. When we add a substituent onto a benzene ring, that is going to affect the rate of the reactions. So some substituted benzenes may undergo electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions more quickly than unsubstituted benzene. For example, benzene is going to react at a rate of 1, toluene, which is in between here, will be 25 times faster than benzene. Adding an electron donating OH group on there will make the reaction 1,000 times faster. If we add a nitro group, which is electron withdrawing, that is going to slow the reaction down 6 times 10 to the negative 8 times slower. So you can see the trend with the reactivity there. Electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions are also regioselective. If I already have a substituent on the ring, in this case, instead of doing the reaction with benzene, I'm going to do it with toluene, and the location in where the nitro group is added is dependent on the group that's already on there. So we could get three different products. There is the ortho addition. So this is ortho nitro toluene. This is 63% yield. We can get a meta addition. This is 3% or the para. This is 34%. So the addition of the nitro group is going to depend on where it's going to get added, and that is based off of the methyl group that's already on the ring. So we can see here that the ortho addition and the para are preferred greatly over the meta addition, which is only 3%. If we look at the mechanism of how the reaction works, the electrons from the benzene ring next to the CH3 group is going to attack the nitro as it would if it was just benzene. And then we have this carbocation that forms at this position, which can be stabilized by resonance, but you also have this positive charge sitting on the carbon where the alkyl group is. This can inductively donate towards resonance stabilization. And you can draw the resonance structures of the sigma complex. That's in the ortho attack if the nitro group is ortho to the alkyl group. If we have the CH3 in the meta position, the methyl group can never actually donate its electrons inductively and to stabilize the carbocation because it doesn't get back to that specific carbon. It kind of skips one. So meta attack is not preferred. With the para attack, we have the carbocation forming ortho to the group as we had previously, but in this case we can draw a resonance structure where that methyl group is stabilizing that charge. So with the ortho attack with an activating group such as methyl, that can inductively stabilize the resonance charge. With anisole, this is similar. The product that we're going to get here, this is activating. With excess bromine, we would actually see addition of both ortho groups and the para groups. This is 100%. It is a very activated system. So you can see the resonance structures here and how that can donate into there. So this OCH3 can donate the electrons into the ring, forming several different resonance structures. The methoxy group is very activating, so poly substitution is difficult to avoid. These activators are ortho para directors. And we can see why they are ortho para directors. It's similar to the methyl group. Instead of the methyl group stabilizing via inductive, this is stabilizing via resonance. With the methoxy group next to the nitro, we have this stabilization here with the positive charge being stabilized by these electrons, and you can draw all the resonance through the sigma complex. We don't get that resonance stabilization when the nitro group is on the meta position, 
we see it again with the para attack. So when you're trying to propose a synthesis for a molecule, things that you want to consider are where the groups are relative to each other, So this nitro group is para to this group up here. We also want to think about rearrangements. This is a primary group here, so we want to be concerned with whether or not something like this will rearrange. And then you want to think about whether or not the order of addition matters. So for the synthesis, we start with benzene. This group here could be problematic because we have a primary situation here where it could rearrange. So we want to put that group on there first. And instead of using the alkylation, I'm going to use the acylation. So the way that you could attack that is kind of cut your bond there and put your acyl group here, your carbonyl, and then a chlorine on the other side. So I have an isopropyl group. Then we add AlCl3. And then we can do the reduction here with zinc amalgam and HCl. That will give us the alkane. And then I can add the nitric acid with H2SO4. This one is an ortho para director, so that will give us the para. So there's our product. The order of addition does matter in this case, but it will make more sense in a couple of slides here. Deactivating groups have a different effect. If you have a nitro group, this is deactivating. This can attack the nitro, another nitro group, and then we have this positive charge here. But if this is electron withdrawing, This is going to further suck electron density out, which does not stabilize this. It will destabilize it. So that's what happens at the ortho and the para position. We don't want our positive charge attempting to be stabilized by an electron withdrawing group. That's only going to make it worse. So if we can offset it and put it at the meta position, that is preferred. So all electron donating groups, E, D, G, are ortho para directors. They're also activators. So these activators or, ele or electron donating groups are going to direct to the ortho positions or para. All electron withdrawing groups or EWG are meta directors except for the halogens. So the electron withdrawing groups are deactivators. They will point things to the meta position. And halogens are deactivators and electron withdrawing groups, but they are ortho para directors. So halogens withdraw electron density by induction, but they can also donate through resonance. So halogens are the exception, and you can see that here when there's an ortho attack, the chlorine can donate its electron density into the ring in order to stabilize that positive charge at both the ortho position and the para position. So these are a list of the strong activators, and you'll notice here the strong activators have electron lone pairs that they can donate into the ring and with not much else on the ring. Here we have a hydrogen that can donate. This has three electron pairs to donate into the ring. This is a nitrogen, and these are alkyl groups that can inductively into the nitrogen lone pair and then into the ring. So the moderate activators can donate also, because it has this lone pair, 
but we also have electron density being drawn out because of the carbonyls in each of these things. These are things that are weak activators. The carbon or alkyl groups can only donate through induction. And then we have the weak deactivators and the halogens. These are moderate deactivators. So we have a ketone, aldehyde, ester, carboxylic acid, amide, sulfonate, and a nitrile. They're all deactivators or electron withdrawing. These are all meta directors. The nitro group, a carbon with halogens, these are going to be drawing electron density out. And then this positively charged nitrogen will also draw electron density out. So you can see another snapshot of things that are activators. These are all ortho para directors. The deactivators, halogen uh, that are moderate and strong, these ones are the meta directors here. So in order to determine where a group goes next, when you're adding something to a mono-substituted benzene ring, you want to look at electron donating, whether the group is electron donating or withdrawing. Is it activating or deactivating? And then you can determine if it's an ortho para or meta director. So in this situation here, we have a nitrogen that has lone pairs. The lone pairs usually tell us that this is electron donating. That's going to be an activator which means it will direct ortho para. So electron donating groups are usually activators and they direct ortho para. Electron withdrawing groups are deactivators and are meta directors. We're not going to see electron withdrawing groups that direct ortho para. In this example here, we have two different groups. We have a methyl and a nitro. This is the electron donating. This is electron withdrawing. And where the bromine goes could be determined by either of these, but usually the activator is the one that's directing. So the methyl is in charge here. The groups will go ortho to the methyl group. which happens to be also meta to the nitro group. So in both cases, this is directing ortho to the methyl. So in this case, it happened to work out, and we only get the ortho because the para position is already taken. In the next example, we have an OH group and the CH3. The OH is a more stronger activator than the CH3, so the OH will direct. So because the para group is already occupied, the ortho group is going to be where it gets added to next. So in this situation, we have two activating groups. This one probably is a stronger activator because there's more alkyl density. So we could add to this ortho position, this ortho, or this para. And what we see is addition to this, which is major, and also this, which by default is minor. The one that it added to, it happens to be ortho to this and para to this group. The other product was ortho to this isopropyl group and para to the methyl group. It did not add in between due to sterics. is not observed. Something else that we can do in synthesis, if we have a sterically hindered group here, or we want to block off this position and get only the BR group, we can use a blocking group. So we install blocking group. 
This is kind of like using a protecting group. So there's our block. Then we add our BR2 to this position and then remove the blocking group. So if you recall when we did the sulfonation reaction, this is a reversible reaction, so that's what we can use as our temporary blocking group. So adding concentrated sulfuric acid will put the group on. Doing a reaction with dilute sulfuric acid will accomplish the removal of the blocking group. So we have fuming H2SO4. Do our bromination. And then dilute H2SO4.